Going into the next speaker, we have Lieutenant Colonel Christina Henry. She's the personal aide to the Secretary of the Navy. So announcing, uh, really announcing uh, that the Navy needs to be moved towards an agile, uh, an agile force, agile individuals. She's also the future commander of Second Maintenance Battalion, which has a large percentage of the uh, scrum practitioners running around here on the East Coast. Ma'am, over to you. All right, thank you so much. Again, this is Lieutenant Colonel Christina Henry. Uh, so uh, thanks for that introduction. I really appreciate it. Uh, some of the recent uh, readings that have helped to shape my thoughts uh, for this panel discussion are uh, the SECNAV Vector 16, Agility in a Time of Crisis, the Commandant's Plan and Guidance, uh, MCDP4, Logistics, MCRP6, TAC11, Delta, Sustaining the Transformation, Leading Change by John Cotter, and also Maneuvers for Agility, which was in the February edition of the Marine Corps Gazette. Some key projects uh, that I've thought through uh, uh, to kind of get after this topic a little bit about uh, leading, uh, uh, well, about agility in a time of crisis are naval logistics integration, in-transit visibility, 3D printing, expeditionary advanced basing operations, littoral operations in a contested environment, many of our operational war plans, and 4D and 5D printing. You heard it here first, 4D and 5D printing. And of course, there's a countless mentors and coaches that have helped to influence this discussion along the way. And so uh, agility can be understood as the ability to rapidly change or adapt in response to complex problems. Our ability to lead rapid changes in a complex, is a complex problem in itself. This discussion is essentially about being agile when the complex problem is to lead your organization through change, uh, which ties in uh, hand in hand with the questions that you just heard uh, opposed to uh, the other panelists and some of the uh, conversations that we've been having. So in the uh, book, Leading Change by John Carr, he essentially talks about eight steps uh, in order to be able to, uh, to get after uh, this, this complex problem. First one is establish a sense of ur urgency. People need to know why they must change. The sense of urgency needs to be there consistently. One needs hard facts, but critically need to bring uh, them alive emotionally. We need to get to the big issues from below the tables and get them talked about as awareness and acceptance is the first and most crucial step of change. The management must embody us. We must embody the change we wish to see in others. It needs to start at the top and I'm fortunate to be able to witness this on a daily basis. It's critical to escalate the level of urgency. Some of the tactics that are used to employ uh, the level of urgency is creating a crisis. Uh, in this day and age, we don't have to create a crisis. Uh, COVID-19 is, uh, is, is, is at our doorsteps. Uh, if, but if people can't, uh, but you could create a crisis, uh, if people can't see it, then they don't believe that there's a problem. Another tactic is to uh, set objectives uh, that cannot be achieved by your current activities and strategies. Everyone must be measured against the bigger goals. Make everyone aware of failing key metrics whether that be by customer satisfactions, financial health, uh, competitive benchmarks, et cetera. Also, insist that people talk regularly to unsatisfied customers, unhappy suppliers, and disgruntled stakeholders. We must use consultants and or surveys uh, to uncover the truth. Uh, but when I say surveys, be careful or conscientious of uh, survey fatigue. Increasing the number of honest discussions requires humility, uh, which is spoken about in Vector 16. Humility is a quality of agility. Uh, we must let the truth be heard. The second thing that's mentioned is creating a guiding coalition. Think of this as your, uh, your core operational planning team, your OPT. As mentioned in the Maneuvers for Agility article, no one individual can do it all alone. She or he needs to inspire the team who wants to follow that vision. Inspire the minds, ignite the hearts, and illuminate the way. The whole organization needs to feel a sense of responsibility for change. Each of us is a agent of change. The guiding coalition should be made up of people who are credible, authoritative, so they can influence others. And they must have the expertise and skills to help guide the decision-making process through change. Our management, our management style uh, to achieve agility is critical to individual employee engagement. Managing complex change requires vision, skills, incentives, resources, and an action plan or strategy. Without vision, there will be confusion. 
Without skills, there will be anxiety. Without incentives, there will be resistance. Without resources, there will be frustration. And without an action plan or strategy, there will be futility. And so the third point that mentions uh, really gets after uh, developing a vision and a strategy for change. Having a clear vision and strategy directs, uh, aligns, and inspires actions in all the employees. Also helps to avoid, uh, sorry, to provide clarity over every single decision made within an organization and clears the, de the decks for unnecessary projects and actions. The vision story uh, needs to be consistently told. When you think you have told everyone, tell them again and again and again. Actions speak louder than words, so you need to enact it. We learn primarily through modeling. There are six characteristics of a great vision statement. Imaginable, desirable, feasible, focused, flexible, and communicable. The fourth point, communicate the change vision. Vector 16 talks about visibility and transparency. Great visions are nothing if they cannot be communicated. Thus the use of a story and or metaphor, uh, multiple media platforms, simplicity, repetition, and leading by example all apply. Point five, empower employees for broad-based action. Vector 16 talks about collaboration. Empowering employees does not mean that we as leaders should have a complete hands-off approach. We must be involved in the execution to get things done. Many organizations prevent uh, employees from making changes that are required. Uh, there's formal structures like departmental silos, uh, belief systems or past values. Sometimes the sacred cows do need to be slaughtered. There's a lack of skills, either uh, train, training in or bringing in new talent uh, with the skills that are required. Also, uh, people with the old skills may hold back change. Systems, uh, for example, old processes, uh, bonus systems that reward old behavior or systems that keep measuring the wrong things uh, will also hamper change. Departmental bosses, uh, senior personnel, uh, and me as an elder millennial, I'll lump myself into this category for the sake of discussion because I'm constantly on an internal lookout for this. Uh, but some may uh, uh, often uh, have risen to positions by doing old things really well and hence more reluctant to shift behavior. They are highly influential and can poison change, especially if their department or section is threatened by the changes. Point number six, generate short-term wins. Vector 16 talks about velocity and speed, which are some of my initial thoughts when I think about agility. Uh, it's critical to maintain the belief and support for the change. Generating some quick wins help to maintain belief. It keeps the critics at bay and it refuels uh, the full momentum. Short wins need to be visible, unambiguous, and clearly relating to the change program and authentic. Point number seven talks about consolidating gains and uh, producing more change. Uh, don't let the sense of urgency drop uh, as this is the point of an organization uh, can start to go backwards as resistance is always waiting to reassert itself. Use data, especially comparisons versus competition, but bring it alive, right? Uh, start slowly with just a few often smaller projects and as time uh, goes on, you can push and start to increase to, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 change projects. Uh, but really just try to take it on uh, as, as you can without overwhelming uh, the organization. Having gained some momentum, it's now possible to tackle some of the biggest, bigger change problems, projects. Often uh, the big mountains will lead back to the fundamental driving beliefs of an organization. Another way I see agility practice daily is the, this open system where anyone can contribute uh, ideas, raise issues, identify extra areas that need change. Number eight, the final point, anchor new approaches in the culture. Uh, we need to, uh, to get the new behaviors, values, and belief systems firmly rooted. Change is, ne is uh, never ending, uh, so we need to continue to instill a culture of constant change because after all, the Department of the Navy is a learning organization. In closing, uh, teleworking has produced opportunities to inc increase collaboration uh, rather than obstacles. We get to hear and see our leaders and innovators as they have taken advantage of this changing world. Those innovators, collaborators, critical thinkers, and influencers from across the DOD are coming together to discuss and take action on projects, ideas, and solutions via social media, 
to make the most value out of the times where physical distancing is the new norm. Thanks for joining us in this conversation and I encourage you to keep up the momentum uh, of innovation alive within the Department of the Navy. We still have a mission and are dedicated to using this time to accomplishment. And always remember, never let a crisis go to waste. Ma'am, uh, I'm having some technical difficulties with my video, but uh, my first question is, what is 4D and 5D printing? Uh, keeping in mind we're on the social media environment, because that sounds like something out of a, a Marvel movie. <laughs> Uh, definitely not something out of a uh, out of a Marvel movie. Uh, it's probably worth a uh, a, a webinar uh, in itself, and I really I don't know that we would have the, the amount of time to to get into it. But uh, but in essence, you know, you can think of uh, 4D printing as uh, you know bringing something into a uh, a different environment, uh, and that something uh, uh, that different environment activates uh, whatever it was that was printed. Uh, so an example uh, is uh, if something you know say that this is a box. Uh, and it's printed uh, flat and it's transported flat, uh, whenever it gets to its destination, uh, it can be activated by uh, the environment, uh, whether it be a, a certain uh, salt water is a prime example. So you can activate it by salt water and then this flat object then creates and eventually turns itself uh, into a box. Uh, there's several YouTube videos uh, in which you can look that up. I will definitely be doing that immediately after this webinar, man. Uh, question from Alex Buitrago. I apologize if I uh, butcher your name. Hi, Alex. She, he says uh, he's been one of your students at EWS. How can they expect to see the material that we're talking about today integrated into professional education curriculums such as EWS? Uh, well, I think uh, we all have a, a, a responsibility. So uh, if you, in order to realize uh, the change or in order to realize things like we inherently, we each have our own responsibility uh, to, uh, to bring it in into the curriculum. So it's a matter of just uh, us all taking responsibility for the change that we want to see and, uh, and making sure that the right people know about it. Absolutely, ma'am. Uh, another question from Kimberly C. What are the tangible ways to develop the sense of urgency in an environment in which Marines do not train together regularly, and the day-to-day -day work is primarily garrison-based? Uh, tangible ways to uh, uh, say that one more time? Develop the sense of urgency. I guess it would be command climate, uh, kind of centered yeah. around the, the eight points that you hit earlier. Yeah, I'm just writing that down as I, uh, as I think about it. I uh, would be willing to... Uh, uh, to get back with her on that one, you know, when you think about, you know, some, some of those tangible ways of trying to create a sense of urgency when, uh, uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're out in essentially like disparate uh, locations. So I'll get back to her on that. That's a, uh, that requires some time to answer. Absolutely. And Kimberly, there'll be an email that one of the facilitators can post in the comments for you to be able to uh, follow up on that question. Uh, in regards to survey fatigue that you mentioned, how can leaders generate input continuously without uh, causing debilitating survey fatigue? I mean, we, we talk about it often. Just get up and walk around. Uh, surveys don't have to be me sitting at my uh, computer uh, answering questions. You know, surveys are uh, the leadership, uh, all of us getting away from our uh, desk, from behind our keyboard, and simply just walking around and, and talking to uh, uh, our peers, talking to those that we lead, and then talking to those that, uh, that, that lead us as, as well. I think, you know, we just have to, uh, to be creative uh, when we think of, uh, of surveys to prevent survey fatigue. Absolutely, man. And, and a question from Chris, how, how are we currently incentivizing behaviors associated with agility? And I think all the points that you hit uh, within all of our, our leadership ranks. Yeah, and that's another one that would uh, that takes a little bit more uh, more time. I know, uh, you know, the, the Marine Corps itself, uh, you know, the Commandant and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps uh, definitely have a, a lot of ideas uh, about uh, incentivizing. And, you know, incentivizing, that's always a, a tough uh, topic to a certain degree because, uh, you know, do I need to be incentivized to lead my Marines? Uh, to a certain degree, I would hope not. Uh, but that is, uh, some people are motivated uh, by, uh, by incentives. And so it's definitely going to take uh, a bit of uh, creativity. And I know that there's a lot of solutions uh, that are out there. And I can take that question and, uh, and get a reply back. 
Absolutely, man.